Welcome back, Wargamers. Today I'm going to show you how I made my faux fur wargaming mat. If you haven't seen a faux fur mats out there, uh, look them up. I think you'll find that they simulate a grassland better than any other mats out there. And all you need to do it is uh, a few, uh, few different paints, something to trim the faux fur with, and a comb, and you can make a pretty high quality mat. Now, you'll need two yards of any faux fur. I went with grizzly bear fur because it has a brown color background which will help me when I'm uh, blending the paints. It also is very long hair so I can trim it to different lengths but again you can choose any kind of faux fur. It'll cost you around 30 or 40 dollars so for those two yards uh, but most places like Joann's they have coupons that will allow you to you know have a significantly cheaper mat than you might think but it still will be more expensive than the canvas and uh, and caulk mats I've made in the past. So first you'll need a brush, just a cheapo brush, and a comb to do all your blending and painting. You'll need a variety of really cheap craft paints that you see here, usually yellows and greens, some scissors, and if you want some buzz clippers, you do not need to use buzz clippers, uh, but uh, it helps the job go faster than just using scissors. My first step was to actually comb the fur. All right, combing will break up some of the mats that are in the faux fur and also uh, make the fur all, all kind of go in the same direction, which will make it easier for cutting. and It'll get out some of the loose stuff that you don't want to deal with. So just comb it over a few times, get out any of the loose hairs, and uh, as you see here, and that will help you in your cutting steps. So after I've combed it, now I'm going to start trimming the fur. If you notice, if I put this figure down, you know it kind of gets lost in the length of the fur and doesn't stand up very well, so we need to make sure we trim it down to a short enough length that your figures will stand. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to buzz it to an initial length. I'm just using kind of the number two on the clippers, and I'm going to take off kind of over half of the length of the fur. I'm going to run this over the entirety of the mat. Now again, you do not need to use buzz clippers. You can uh, go over it with scissors. It is just very time consuming. So if you have access to buzz clippers or here, this is like dog clippers, um, it will save you a ton of time. So my initial pass, I'm going to go over all of it. I'm not gonna leave really any of the mat with its initial length because it is just much too tall for any figures to stand on. So after I've gone over that initial run with the level 2 clippers. I'm going to put on a level 1, which is I guess half half the length of my previous uh, previous clipper. And I'm going to run this over, I would say, maybe 90% of the mat. I'm going to leave a few places with the longer length of the level 2 clipper. Uh, but for the majority of it, I want it to be short. Uh, because even with the level 2, even though it's, it was half the length after I trimmed it the first time that it was initially, it was still a little too long for my figures to stand on. So most of the mat will get this treatment with uh, this the shorter clipper, the level 1. And again, just going to run it over places. Uh, I'm going to try and plan out beforehand where I want the longer and shorter sections of the mat to be to give it that kind of nice variation in length you see in grasslands. And now for my final layer, I'm just going to use the bear clipper on the fur. And I would say I'm going to go over about 50% of the mat with just the bear clipper to give again that nice variation in length of grass. All right, so um, this is the most uh, time consuming part is cutting the fur with your, your scissors and clippers. The painting actually goes very quickly and the blending and all that. It's just getting it to a size that you like that takes the most amount of time. And even then though, it's not an extraordinary amount of time. I, I would say I finished this entire mat in about four hours, which in the scheme of making wargaming terrain, not bad at all. So here I am going over again with with just the bare clipper. After going over it, as you'll see here, I'll kind of uh, you know fluff up the fur again and go over it because even after you run over with clippers, it can lie down and and uh, you'll need probably several passes going over the same area to really give it the trim that you want. All right, so there we go. My sections are all pretty much buzzed up, and then the last step is I'm just going to take some scissors for some really kind of 
drastic uh, changes in the, kind of the, the grass length. This will give me like some divots in the grass or, and also help me kind of uh, blend the lengths of the really short and the really high sections of grass. And then after I cut it with scissors, I went over one more time with the clippers just to uh, smooth out those divots I'd made. And so now onto the painting. So here you'll kind of see the section that I've already started on. You can see uh, that there's, you know, I use different colors of greens and yellows and kind of blended together and gave kind of a smooth transition between the different colors. So I'm just going to show you the process I use to paint and blend the fur. It's not all that complex. If you've ever done any wet blending, it's going to uh, kind of use the same uh, techniques as that. Just instead of a brush, uh, you're going to be mixing in a comb in there to help you do it as well. And so now I will show the technique in action. Sorry for the glare. It was really bright when I did this outside. Uh, but hopefully you'll still be able to see what I'm doing here. Uh, so first I'm just going to take some yellow paint, some dark yellow paint, and I'm going to place it on the section that I, of course, want to color. And I'm going to take a brush, which I have not cleaned off. It still has all the greens and yellows from other sections on there to help blend it in. And then I'm just going to rub it into the fur, a very initial pass, kind of spread it out in all different directions. It will, the color will be kind of concentrated in the middle and then it will kind of grow lighter uh, as I spread it out and around. And the next thing I'm going to do is after I've put it on with the brush is I'm going to take this comb, which you see here, and, and spread it out even more, break up some of the, that thick paint that's kind of globbed on there and spread it around to the nearby fur. This is your really your blending tool. Your brush is just to get the paint on there and kind of spread it around initially, and then you use the comb for your real color blending. All right, so now I'm gonna take some kind of bright, almost hunter green over here, and again, I'm going to uh, take my brush and do my initial kind of spread and kind of try and mix it in with the, with the yellow a little bit so I can get a nice little blend to the colors there. Then I'll go and I'll take my comb and really start spreading it out. Now, if you're looking and you're thinking, man, that color is so green, that doesn't look very realistic, don't worry. I, whenever I put green down, I always go over it with at least one color of yellow. And the final step for my entire mat is I'll tie all the colors together with kind of a lemon yellow. So, uh, because if you look at a grassland, you will notice that there are more yellows than greens, actually. And we will. We will tie it all together, do not worry. All right, so that's my initial kind of green down. And as I said, to kind of uh, tone down the, the brightness of the green, I will coat some yellow on top of that and spread that around. And you'll notice that the, the blend will be very subtle. It will look very similar to uh, the aerial shot of an actual grassland. So here I'm just going over it with the comb and blending the colors into one another. This process goes really quick. You can do large swaths of the mat at one time. Uh, you'll notice that uh, it's pretty easy. So I continue and on the other side of the green I'll put the yellow down. That, that was kind of how I did this mat. I'd do one section green, one section yellow, maybe put in a little brown next to it. I tried to, tried to alternate colors so that you had this kind of nice patchwork looking grassland like you're looking down on I don't know like a farmland or something so here is the grassland after kind of my initial paint job now I, I think it looks pretty good at this point uh, however I'm not done as I mentioned before I'm going to go over the entire mat with kind of a highlight color of lemon yellow uh, to tie tie it all together and blend it even more so here is just my really bright lemon yellow and just like kind of like dry brushing over brush I'm just gonna lightly touch upon the tops of the of the grass on the mat alright so just lightly go over it and we will of course blend it in with our comb after we kind of put the lemon across a large portion of the mat so here we go I'll take our comb now and we will just brush it in and this will really blend all those different colors together, whether it be 
greens or yellows or browns just this last little little step will really bring a subtle gradation to all the different colors you have going on your wargaming mat and that's as easy as it gets i would recommend doing this outside unless you uh, want to get your divorce lawyer on the phone because this will make a mess um, but it's pretty simple pretty quick so I've put a little uh, saga force up on the, the board just to kind of show off the mat, and I am really pleased with how it turned out. Kind of uh, exceeded my expectations, to be honest. So if we get down in there, you just notice, like, man, that looks like people are fighting in a grassland. Like, it's pretty impressive what you can do with this faux fur. And for not being too complicated or difficult, this was a great project to do. I might have if I make another mat, even trim it a little bit shorter. For these guys who are only on 25 millimeter rounds, some of them were having a hard time standing up. I did notice for all my Age of Sigmar stuff that's on 32 uh, millimeters or more, they had no problem standing up and, and looked just fine on it. So there you go. Here is how you can make your own wargaming mat. Hopefully you uh, were able to Pick up some techniques that you can use to make your own faux fur mat. And uh, anyways, if you liked and enjoyed this video, please do subscribe, hit the like button, and I will be back soon with a bunch more terrain tutorials. Until next time.